Hey everyone and welcome to This Week in Social Justice where I discuss all the biggest and baddest social justice fails of the past seven days. Now I haven't been able to do one of these for a while so I have cast a slightly wider net than seven days because of course there is always plenty to talk about when it comes to social justice fails. So this week we have actress and Me Too advocate Asia Argento and the uh, sexual assault claim against her. We have the fact that millennials prefer socialism to capitalism, God help them, and we may even be able to fit in a bonus topic. So let's get started. Actress Asia Argento has cemented herself as one of the leading lights of the hashtag MeToo movement when she accused Harvey Weinstein of raping her when she was 21 in a widely lauded speech at the Cannes Film Festival in May of this year. So it is rather ironic then that a woman who went to the public arena rather than the police to accuse a man of sexual assault is now settling a sexual assault claim against, well, herself. Former child actor Jimmy Bennett, who played Argento's son in the 2004 film The Heart is Deceitful Above All Things, accused her of sexually assaulting him at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Marina del Rey, California, when he was just two months past his 17th birthday. Argento was 37 at the time, and the age of consent in California is 18. Now, originally, Argento denied the allegations. However, TMZ obtained text messages in which she admits to a friend that the two did indeed have intercourse, even though, interestingly enough, Argento states it was he who jumped her, along with a selfie of the two of them topless in bed. Now, what is astounding here, but of course not at all surprising, is the gross double standard that has been perpetuated by Asia Argento, the other Me Too leaders, and of course, the media. Argento's response to Bennett's claim was to paint him as a gold digger, as you'll see here, making false claims to make a quick buck. Now this is identical to the kind of response from men about women who made such accusations that the Me Too ladies were allegedly rallying against. As for the other Me Too leaders, who were screaming from the rooftops that all women should be believed when it comes to accusations against men, and totally rejecting due process by encouraging and perpetuating a guilty until proven innocent mentality, there has been hardly a peep out of any of them. With the exception of a few soft responses, such as this one from prominent Me Too activist Rose McGowan, in which she states her heart was broken and to be gentle. Or Mira Sorvino, who stated she was heart sick and reeling from the news and hoping against hope it isn't true. Or this one from Alyssa Milano, chief instigator of the Me Too movement and whistleblower on Harvey Weinstein, who tried to paint Asia Argento as the victim and seemed more concerned with defending the legitimacy of the Me Too movement than anything else. People that have been abused can also be abusers. Um, and that's a sad fact. Alyssa Milano saying the allegations against Argento will not tarnish the movement. The fact that people are, are still coming forward and still holding people accountable for their actions whether that be a male predator or a female predator, uh, to me that's a testament that, that the movement is working and there is progress. And as for the media, holy wow has Argento ever been given a guilt-free pass. The most we really got out of the feminist brigade and the mainstream media was flailing defenses of Me Too and why this incident doesn't invalidate it. Now, I tend to agree with that. I don't think the Argento-Bennett situation invalidates anything. However, the hypocrisy is interesting to behold and astounding to comprehend. So big, massive, giant fail on behalf of the Me Too Social Justice Brigade on this particular issue. A recent Gallup poll has revealed that the majority of millennials in the US favor socialism over capitalism. 51% of people aged 18 to 29 have a positive attitude to socialism, whereas 45% prefer capitalism. An Australian study by Think Tank, the Centre for Independent Studies in June this year yielded similar results. Okay, first of all, I would just like to apologise on behalf of my generation. I promise we are not all that stupid. Just apparently most of us. Now, uh, what can best explain the millennial love affair with socialism is a sheer ignorance of what the ideology actually is. 
I mean, millennials were born in the last couple of decades of the 20th century, so after most of the major violence and oppression that were caused by socialist regimes. The oldest of us were only nine when the Berlin Wall fell, so considering we did not grow up viewing the horrors and awfulness that socialism caused, of course we are going to look at it through rose-coloured glasses. When Australian and American millennials think socialism, they think of Scandinavia and the surrounding regions, touted by Bernie Sanders as so-called democratic socialism. But here's the thing, that ain't socialism. Scandinavia is not by any means an example of a socialist utopia. Yes, they have very high taxes and a very well-maintained welfare state which leads to a lot of public services, which yes, are socialist policies, but a lot of Western countries have socialist policies, including Australia and America. However, to use Denmark, say, as an example, it has a very market-driven economy which allows for free and private enterprise. That's not socialism. A socialist economy would require all industrial and production capacity to be communally owned and managed by consensus or government. In Scandinavia, that is clearly not the case as private individuals are allowed to own businesses, forge their own enterprise and be entrepreneurs, albeit while being taxed through the nose. Also, think about it. A tiny little country like Sweden is going to spend much, much less tax dollars on things like infrastructure than a much larger country like the USA. As such, all that extra tax money can be spent on things like wonderful public services, universal health care, etc. It is simply a matter of who won the geographical lottery. That is why places like Finland, Denmark, Sweden et al. are such happy places not because they are socialism success stories. True socialism, however, is a whole nother kettle of fish. Now, as I mentioned earlier, socialism requires all means of production to be owned by the state rather than private individuals and for the government to have a dominant role in every aspect of your life. In addition, in the early 20th century, post our good friend Karl Marx, socialism was actually never the end goal. Communism was. That is, a classless society without hierarchy, without currency, and without personal property. The general consensus amongst the early communists was that the transition from capitalism to communism would inherently require a violent revolution where the workers would rise up against the middle and upper classes. Now, since it's a bit impractical to mobilize an entire population of workers to do that, those in charge realized that a gentler sort of transition period was needed to achieve the ultimate goal. Enter socialism. Now, while no successful communist state has ever actually been implemented because communism is the greatest ideological failure in human history, the socialist leaders in places like Russia and China certainly did their darndest to make it happen. <laughs> This transition period of socialism led to, according to some estimations, the deaths of about 94 million people at the hands of socialist governments. And that figure only includes deaths that were a direct result of violent government interventions, so not including deaths by starvation and disease, which are the conditions that a socialist state tends to bring. Which is why, boys and girls, governments should always be small and never fully trusted. To dial it back a notch and on a slightly brighter note, higher standards of living and lower levels of poverty are inherently associated with freer economies. So if millennials manage to pull their heads out of the stand and somehow absorb even some of that information, you'd hope they'd have a slightly less favorable view of socialism and maybe cut capitalism some slack, considering capitalism gave them pretty much everything that they own, see, and consume. Also, side note, Nazi actually stands for National Socialist Party. Coincidence? Huge social justice fail on this one. Absolutely huge. Bonus topic. We have a bonus topic this week, which is great. Now, this is just a very quick nod, but I really want to talk about this because it is really quite funny. 
So Alyssa Milano of Charmed and Hashtag Me Too fame is starring in a new series for Netflix called Insatiable. It is about a previously fat teenager nicknamed Fatty Patty who's bullied at school for her weight who undergoes a huge and accidental body transformation over summer when she's forced to have her jaw wired shut and comes back to school a skinny hottie and as such decides to use her newfound confidence to get revenge on everyone who's ever been mean to her. Now personally, I think it sounds like a hoot. However, regardless of the fact it was produced as a sort of ironic female empowerment series, the social justice squadrons have slammed it as the worst kind of fat shaming. Now, Alyssa Milano has tried many, many times to explain that it was meant to be satirical and a look at the damage fat shaming does. However, what she forgot is that the very people who created her with their support of the Me Too movement also have no sense of humour and no comprehension of anything tongue-in-cheek. So once again we see that when a lefty steps out of line, even if only slightly and with the best of intentions, they will soon be devoured by the rest of the mob. So I am only going to give this a little bit of a social justice fail, simply because I love watching the left eat itself. Thanks for watching everyone. Now if you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then how about pledging at my Patreon? The link is in the video description.